Greetings, rainbow warriors of light of Ter Nanag, stepping through the celestial portal into the new golden age of eternal life, eternal light. Today started off with many codes coming in. First thing, 101010 10, 10 portal, then the 144, 333, 3, 3, and 1212, 12, the energies of Shambhala and Tir Nanag, Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, coming through the field. Yesterday, after we saw this massive white pillar of light on the Schumann Resonance, these amazing clouds were filmed over Mount Rushmore as the gates were taken down, the gateway opened, and the new light shining through, the new Avalon. I'll put the video footage at the end of today's transmissions with an image from the cover of JFK Jr.'s magazine George, which shows a hole in the sky, a futuristic w looking woman, and a full moon over Mount Rushmore, which will synchronized with the full moon and the eclipse tomorrow into the 5th, Independence Day in the U.S. on the 4th, and the 5th in other locations around the world. So this powerful portal is opening into the powerful portal on 7-7. Seven, seven. Today is 7-3. Seven, 73 and 37 codes coming in all day. 6-4-4 four, four coming in. Today on the Schumann Resonance at 12 UTC 18 Hertz spike and then it was actually at 21 UTC and then again at 12 UTC it was 18 again so we have the 1818 which is 99 or the 9 energy and the 1221 synchronizing with the winter solstice and then we had a 20 Hertz spike at 14 UTC we are getting consistent higher dimensional energies of gamma waves through Solaris connected to the central sun of the galaxy connected to the central sun Hunabku at the center of the universe first thing this morning we had a 4-4 magnitude earthquake in Pakistan just off the coast in the Arabian Sea then again we had multiple earthquakes in South America Chile and Argentina Argentina had a 4.5 at 446 UTC, 40 latitude, 71 longitude, very deep at 168 kilometers depth. And then we also had in Chile a 4.5 at 458 UTC, 24 latitude, 71 longitude, and then a very significant quake of a 4.6. 17.2 miles from the volcano on the big island of Hawaii, the heart of Lemuria, at 19 degrees latitude, 155 degrees longitude. The most powerful quake today was a 5.3 with the Atlantean energies coming in out of Puerto Rico, 17 latitude, 67 longitude. Then there were many Aftershocks after that, 3.0, 3.2, and a 3.3, 4.1, two 3.6s, and a 3.2. So we had about 10 quakes, one right after another. Today, that divine masculine energy rising up, connect with the divine feminine. Very powerful energies as we're awakening the Trinity, the third and final eclipse in this Trinity series. Connected with the Ring of Fire. Today's first transmission from Divine Sister of the Light, Patricia Cota Robles. July 4th, 2020 Eclipse. A global mission for the USA. On July 4th, we will be blessed with a full moon lunar eclipse that will complete the powerful triple eclipse series we've been experiencing for the past month. This event coincides with the celebration of Independence Day in the United States of America. According to the Company of Heaven, the synchronicity of these two events and the unprecedented events that are happening around the world are paving the way for the fulfillment of a facet of the divine plan that has been unfolding in the realms of cause since the United States of America 
lost our way after the founding of this country. No matter where you abide on the face of the earth, your assistance in bringing this facet of the divine plan to God victorious fruition will benefit all life evolving on this planet. Please keep an open heart and open mind and respond according to your heart's call. Your light is needed now. In October of 2019, a huge portal of light that once pulsated in the heavenly realms above New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C., was activated and once again opened to full breath. It is through this portal that our founding fathers, in spite of their flaws, were inspired to write the sacred documents that form our Declaration of Independence our Bill of Rights, and our Constitution. The divine intent of these documents was to guide the behavior of American citizens in a way that would fulfill the destiny for this new world. That destiny was for America to model to the rest of the people on this planet a higher order of being, a new world that would heal the illusion of separation and demonstrate to the masses the oneness of the family of humanity. The plan was that within this consciousness of oneness, American citizens would revel in our diversities and collectively make decisions and take actions that reflect only the highest good for all concerned, thus allowing everyone to live in prosperity, equality, peace, and happiness. The name America is an anagram for the I Am Race. This name was intended to reflect a race of God-conscious people, comprised of all races, all nationalities, all cultures, all religions, all creeds, and all lifestyles, a race of people who are functioning within the full embrace of their I Am Presence, reflecting oneness, divine love, reverence for all life, and decisions and actions that perpetually reflect the highest good for all concerned. Needless to say, with the manipulation of our fragmented and fear-based human egos, America had fallen far from the fulfillment of her divine destiny. As a result of that failure, the portal of light through which our founding fathers were inspired to write our sacred documents became almost dormant. This severely limited the divine guidance that the people who have been responsible for governing this country were able to receive. In most instances, those governing this country and those electing those who govern this country have been oblivious of America's divine destiny. With the recent activation of humanity's 12 fifth-dimensional crystalline solar strands of DNA, our 1212 catalyst codes, our transfiguration codes, our divine body templates, and the awakening we are experiencing through the forced timeout and the planetary reboot for which we are currently preparing, Humanity's mass consciousness has been elevated to a brand new level. This higher consciousness will allow the patterns for divine government to register in the conscious mind and heart flame of every son and daughter of God in ways we have not previously experienced. As we receive the influx of the light on July 4th, which will conclude the most powerful triple eclipse series the earth has ever known, the company of heaven is asking us to join together in divine service to transmute the cause, core, effect, record, and memory of the obsolete and fear-based miscreations that have for centuries corrupted and distorted the patterns of government, not only for the United States of America, but also for the rest of the world. Our participation in this activity of light will pave the way for the new and heart-based form of divine government that exists on the new earth, This is a government of the I Am Presence, by the I Am Presence, for the I Am Presence of every person, a government based in oneness, divine love, and reverence for all life. The patterns of perfection for this form of government are being revealed in new ways through the newly activated transfiguration codes in humanity's fifth dimensional DNA and our greatly enhanced heart flames. The United States of America has a vital role to play in the manifestation of divine government on this planet. Unfortunately, the events surfacing in the outer world at this time are reflecting the antithesis of this new heart-based form of government. This is occurring because the light of God is increasing on earth due to the awakening taking place within every person. This is pushing everything that conflicts with God's light and divine government to the surface to be healed and transmuted. 
back into its original perfection. Consequently, every day we are witnessing how very broken and corrupt not only our political system is in the USA, but how broken and corrupt the governmental systems are around the world as well. As we join in consciousness with the company of heaven to empower divine government, know that the I Am presence of lightworkers all over the world are joining with us all as well. Together we are co-creating a chalice of light through our unified heart flames that will serve as an open door through which the patterns of perfection for divine government will be secured in the physical world of form. And we begin, the goddess of liberty, justice, freedom, victory, and glory, now, in the name of the almighty presence of God, I am, and through the creative fire pulsating in every person's heart flame, we invoke the goddess of liberty, the goddess of justice, the goddess of freedom, the goddess of victory, and the goddess of glory to take their strategic positions around Washington, D.C. and the surrounding areas. We also invoke the silent watcher for Washington, D.C. and all of the mighty guardians and cosmic beings who dwell in the etheric complex over Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas. Blessed ones, come forth now and assist us with the most powerful cleansing activity humanity and the earth are capable of receiving during this cosmic moment. As one unified heart, we now invoke the fifth dimensional frequencies of the violet transmuting flame of God's infinite forgiveness. Blaze, blaze, blaze this sacred violet fire in, through, and around all inharmonious actions, all lower human consciousness, and all obstructions of the light that we or any part of life has ever placed on the pathway of life's perfection through the divine power of infinite forgiveness, transmute this discordant energy, cause, core, effect, record, and memory now and forever. Now, beloved ones, blaze and sustain the multidimensional aspects of the violet flame of God's infinite perfection with the power and might of a thousand suns in, through, and around the President of the United States of America and his cabinet now and forever. Blaze this violet flame in, through, and around the Senate and the House of Representatives for the United States of America and in, through, and around all of the people associated with the governments in the United States at national, state, and local levels now and forever. Expand the sacred fire through the Supreme Court and all courts of law, all legal procedures, and all who are associated with law enforcement at every level, now and forever. Blaze this violet flame in, through, and around the United Nations and all of its members and all of the people associated with their various countries, now and forever. Now expand the violet flame with the power and might of a thousand suns through all world leaders and every person associated with any government on earth at every level, now and forever. We accept that this transmutation and purification by the unfathomable frequencies of the fifth dimensional violet flame have been God victoriously accomplished and will be permanently sustained through the power of God I am. We now call for divine government. I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of all humanity as one breath, one voice, one heartbeat, and one energy, vibration, and consciousness of pure, divine love. I invoke the great beings of light, associated with divine government to this planet. I invoke the beloved ascended masters guarding the evolutions of earth. Blessed ones, blaze the sacred fires of God's perfect will, divine love, and divine enlightenment in, through, and around every person involved with the governments of earth at national, state, and local levels, blaze the sacred fires of God's will, divine love, and divine enlightenment in, through, and around the electorate and the government officials of all nations. Let them feel and tangibly experience the power, wisdom, and love nature of our Father, Mother, God flowing through their heart flames as they elect their governments and vote on all issues before them. Seal this activity of light in the threefold flame anchored within the heart of every person on earth and expand this light daily and hourly 
with every breath I take. Victory is ours in love, governing this planet. Victory is ours in love, governing this planet. Victory is ours in love, governing this planet, and so it is, beloved I am. The golden flame of enlightenment, now through the supreme eternal mercy and compassion of our Father, Mother, God, the cosmic I am, all that is, I accept the divine fiat that is allowing new frequencies of the yellow-gold flame of enlightenment from the very heart of God to awaken, enlighten, empower, guide, and protect all of humanity in ways that have never before been attempted. This is creating the sacred space for the tangible manifestation of divine government in the USA and all governments around the world. Through this awakening and divine enlightenment, God's will for planet Earth shall manifest. The oneness of all life in every country's divine plan will be fulfilled in perfect divine order. Divine government will be the order of the new day on planet Earth. We command and consciously decree that this profound truth is now all-powerfully active, ever-expanding, world-encompassing, and eternally sustained, right here and right now. And so it is. Beloved I am, that I am. God bless you. Patricia Cota Robles from eraofpeace.org Today from the Archangelic Calendar, Gaia has decided to go back into the spirit setting again, making this one of the most auspicious days in recent memory. There is a, clearly a big shift happening and we will be watching it unfold before our eyes in real time over the next few days. Gaia seems to be the only variable in our world as we have been able to accurately calculate everything else in existence, but this very temperamental planet's mood swings. Organized darkness thinks that they are taking orders from their future selves, when in fact they have been greatly deceived by a race of galactic beings. This is why their plans keep failing. Their entire hierarchy has fallen and has been replaced by an undisclosed source. It is unclear the exact logistics of those that have been deceiving them, but nevertheless it was their ultimate downfall. The stargates of the earth are finally turning to light. It took some time, and you can expect a light anomaly like the one in New York City to pop up across the globe as these stargates and ultimately timelines shift into our favor. Faith must be strong before miracles can take place. Since we are about to see a conclusion to human suffering, it is safe to say that faith in divinity is at an all-time high. The legions told us to watch the skies, and we are seeing fluffier clouds, light anomalies, tons of starships, and that is only a small percentage as to what we are about to see. Just in case it wasn't weird enough for you yet, a time rift will be opened in the sky. This is not to be confused with the false images, OD is projecting, which is amateurish at best, and is about to cease altogether. As mentioned, the U.S. holiday will bring a large display of both of these incidents, as most eyes will be on the sky already. Humanity is always looking for a means to an end. That is because our 3D modern lives did not resonate with our souls. On many levels, we see that we were tirelessly wishing for true freedom, and our souls were screaming for this louder than anyone. The freedom craved is the freedom to live as nature intended, which includes the direct will of infinitely expanding creator source was the missing ingredients to our sentient goals. Many moons ago, we promised to keep an eye on the pole shift and inform you of any sudden movements. This is happening as we speak as the poles are moving very fast. Tholth tells us that physical changes do happen when the caps flip and that there is certainly turbulence, but life is not wiped out because of this change. Earth simply adapts and complies with the universal laws of the new engineering settings. This is one of the many reasons for the increased seismic activity. During procreation, a portal is created for a soul to enter. This is a basic polarity portal, and it comes when intention simultaneously ignites contradictory energies. This is based in the metaphysics of nature, and it can be seen everywhere from the sacred geometry of a honeycomb to the beautiful clouds in the sky. If we can dissect these motions, we would notice that it works more like magic than quantifiable science. 
even though it is most certainly quantifiable if one cared to try, the sorceress of organized darkness has been taken down, and it is because of the Legion's metaphysical efforts that allowed the authorities the ability to arrest her. Taking out her demonic or galactic interference provided the doorway for the authorities to take down their leader. This is a very public situation that everyone will be very well aware of, but more importantly, this means that there is no metaphysical backing for organized darkness whatsoever, and they are completely disabled, metaphysically speaking. This event exactly coincides with the exact dates of my third coma, where I was in the middle of this conflict, which is the main reason why we are able to pinpoint this date, because it came from future experience. To be noted, she has already started singing like a canary, as she is not known for her fortitude. There are so many malevolent galactic races who are requesting her soul that she would much rather be in the custody of humanity. There is no limit as to what she will do to keep it that way. We also do not find it even remotely coincidental that Archangel Dra is back on the exact same day this happened. What an entrance from a very powerful and widely unknown powerhouse. Mental triggers will bring back memories from past and future lives. Do not let them pass by without connecting with them in a deep and meaningful way. I hardly ever communicate to you in this manner, but I must say that the sky is filled with archangels, dragons, mythical beings, galactic friends, deities, and much more. I have known these beings for many lifetimes, and I would know them anywhere. They are physically here in ways that we can't even comprehend yet. The higher dimensions are no longer higher. They are our current reality. We are firmly centered in 5D reality. The tools for today's assignments will be in the link in the description below. The assignments for today, one of the most important nations in regard to Earth liberation is Turkey. For one, it has a very large portal that most sentient star beings like to travel through. But the main reason we bring your attention here is that they will be leading the disclosure agenda. It is no coincidence that the Turkish media broke the pedophile story in a public way right after the sorceress was taken out. We must do everything in our power to protect Turkey from the many threats they face from the east. Just like Australia, we must clear the electronics of the country from demonic energies. Insight a diamond and silver lightning pulse for a 72 count through all power lines, data connections, and electronics of Turkey, and then continue this trend around the world for at least a 72 count. A group of malevolent star beings decided to test a weapon on the elephants of Africa, who is part of our animal legion. While the legions have gained amazing non-physical help, their lives were taken unjustly, and thus we must have the compassion to stop those who harm them from destroying their own souls any further. When you attack our legions, we have full right to annihilate you. It's like sending us a written invitation. Obviously, the best course of action is with sword and shield, but do everything in your power not to never was these beings as it is best to simply send them back via portal to infinitely expanding creator source without prejudice. The leaders of this malevolent deed are ancient draconians, much like old dinosaur bones who have glass jaws when it comes to our metaphysical attacks, as do their red and black aura ships. They and their ships are solely responsible for the slaughter of the elephants because they were trying to see how their long-range zapper would work on mammals. They all must be completely removed from using this on anyone else. Rid the skies of these beings. Leave no ships intact. There is a malevolent weather manipulation center, alpha wave disruptor, and other malevolent weaponry located in a private facility in Haifa, Israel. Destroy its main dome with black lightning strikes. Then give it your all with sword and shield. There is a, also a golden dome at a location nearby that is a major source of siphoning. Please be sure to treat it the same way. We are anticipating a much more enjoyable workload in the upcoming season. Archangel Jophiel, Goddess Aphrodite, Water Season, which starts tomorrow. This will bring much more human heart-to-heart -heart building and ambassadorship missions. 
That being said, let's bring the most profound healing to this day so that when we start building our new tomorrow, we do not do so on shaky ground. Send emerald green plasma to every part of the earth, followed by pink plasma and rainbow light. Please hold these motions for at least a 72 count each. This is from the ArchangelicCalendar.com. Also today in meditation, I witness the violet, gold, and emerald green healing waves of light penetrating into the sacred portals of Glastonbury Tor, the sacred portal in Uluru, Australia, and the portals in Sedona, Arizona, also the ancient portals in Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq. So it will be helpful to send, if you can assist in your visualizations, to send these pillars of light, the violet flame of St. Germain, to these areas for the next several days, and on the 7-7 portal, and anywhere else that resonates with you. The Yucatan and Chichen Itza were coming through today also, with the sacred portals there, and the energies of Shambhala, and from Lao Tzu, Taoist master, teaching without words, performing without actions. Few in the world can grasp it. That is the master's way. Rare indeed are those who obtain the bounty of this world. Today from the Zulkin Times, Kin 96, Yellow Overtone Warrior. Overtone is the name for the number five, and its key words are empower, radiance, and command. The fifth day of a wave spell is always powerful, and its effect on the day is formidable. Whatever day it combines with, the number five adds significant intensity and strength. Much can be accomplished on overtone days. Today is Yellow Warrior, and its key words are intelligence, questioning, and fearlessness. It's a crazy intense combination today, as Five Warrior is one of the most powerful warriors in the Zolkin. This is perfect if you have a quest to go on or a mission to undertake. Warrior invites you to be fearless, and the number five gives you power. I highly recommend taking on a quest, as with all this energy around, Choosing not to do anything will result in restlessness and frustration, and there is a likelihood of this energy turning into arguments. Do not go on the warpath, but instead harness this energy and do something useful with it. From Divine Sister of the Light, Christina Papa Giorgio, Yellow Overtone Warrior, Kin 96, 3 July 2020, the most radiant warrior of them all, 3-7-2020, Equal three seven twenty two equal three seven four equal three eleven equal five three holy trinity joy creativity seven mystic magic spiritual four form structure foundation earth eleven portal duality doorway partnership five liberation freedom change transformation kin ninety six equal fifteen 6 code equals 6, heaven, Christ consciousness, harmony, love, romance, an 11 portal month, plus it is also a gap day today, so double portal is activated, gap day, galactic, activation portal, another intensely potent day of divine power to fuel our quest, day 5 in the yellow human wave spell of wisdom, influence, intelligence, free will, and abundance. Today is a day of empowerment, where we use our intelligence and free will to question everything in our world in order to make better choices, leading to better outcomes for all. Tone of creation, overtone, tone five in the spiritual realm, action commands, power empowers, essence radiance. Number five represents the center, core purpose, foundation, and central intent. It is the center of the wheel from which all the spokes emanate. This is the phase where the energy of creation returns to the center and then radiates outwards. Overtones command the unbounded. They order it to be and so it becomes. Their power radiates from their soul essence through a pure connection to source. This is the true source of unlimited power. The overtone warriors are the true leaders of the new earth as they lead through commanding radiance and thus people are naturally drawn to follow in their lead and co-create their inspired vision. Today, 
the rainbow warrior, is commanding back his divine power. Thy will be divine will. The rainbow warriors are being called to action as the new leaders of this golden era we are co-creating. As we close, the old cycle and the old paradigm collapses. Now is the time for the lightworkers, way showers, star blossoms to come forth and heed their highest divine calling. As the new sovereign leaders they signed up to be, so get ready to claim it and step up for divine service. Aho, rainbow warriors, the battle is over and now it is time to lead your tribe to greatness. Today's questions are, what survival issues do I need to finally surrender and let go in order to command back my power and seed my new beginning, blossoming into my fullest potential? How can we collectively as a rainbow tribe become more empowered and radiate our light by seeding the better world we want to live in? P.S. To all those fearless rainbow warriors who have been battling with darkness, today is the day to reclaim your power. Connect with Source and radiate that brilliant luminescence, expanding so strongly that all darkness melts and dissolves in your divine omnipresence. I recommend doing a ritual today to officially surrender. Let go and release any deep base, chakra survival wounding, money, health, shelter and support, fear of the dark, fear of death, abandonment, sexual manipulation, violence, abuse, power issues, etc. Red Serpent is a superpower today giving you back your full vitality and life force through surrendering to the world bridger, death of the old cycle. The warrior fearlessly supports you in commanding back all your power from all sources, timelines, and dimensions in order to seed your new life and fully bloom once again. A fresh start as a fully sovereign, divinely Christed spiritual being. The old game is over. It is time to write a new script. Take command of your life today. Note, as the red serpent governs fire and kundalini energy, may, you may choose to use fire, fire burning, walking, light a candle, etc. Use yoga, chakra balancing, healing, whatever method you choose. Make sure you command your intention with supercharged focus on your outcome. Divine blessings for commanding back your full divine radiant power. In La Kek Ala Kin, Christina White, Magnetic World Bridger, Kin 66, Kin 96, Yellow Overtone Warrior. The mantra, the code for today is, I am power in order to question, commanding fearlessness. I seal the output of intelligence with the overtone tone of radiance. I am guided by the power of flowering. I am a galactic activation portal. Enter me. And as we enter into our own internal activation portal, activating all codes of freedom, harmony, peace, bliss, and joy, we step into our glorious radiance, our divine light our sacred life, as we shine our light brightly into the night, guiding all who are lost to the promised land of the new earth, our true home beyond the stars and within the stars, the star center. So let us know, beloved beings of light, in the comments below what you're experiencing, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, your dreams, your visions, your synchronicities. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and cl click the subscribe button below this video for notifications. Click the little bell. And as always, we have a link in the description below to the transcriptions of today's transmissions. And we archive these on our website, primedisclosure.com. I'd like to also thank everyone for your support and pledges on Patreon. If you'd like to make a pledge, support our mission and work, with Prime Disclosure, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Prime Disclosure. I did a ceremony today that was recorded with Divine Sister of the Light, Beth Soulfire, from bethsoulfire.com. We did a shamanic ceremony with drumming and sacred sounds and taught a ecstatic body posture, a practice for healing, harmony, balance, 
protection called the bear spirit posture or grandfather bear spirit or the sacred grandfather, grandfather great mystery represented as the powerful bear energy, the papa bear, the grand papa of all bears. Yes, the ones that reside in the woods. <laughs> so we will be posting that in the next few days on our Patreon page for all patrons. And then after 30 days of practice, we'll see how it goes to see if we can release it publicly. But there's some things right now that we can only do privately and for our teams and people that we're working directly with until we navigate through the final shift, what people are calling the event, the rapture, the quantum leap of consciousness, whatever name we give to this breakthrough of consciousness through all veils, through all illusions, all constructs of all matrices, we have to be careful how we navigate through these unprecedented times and unknown energies. Every day new codes are coming in, new frequencies, new energies, new resonance. And through these energies of higher dimensional frequencies, they are assisting all divine beings of light in this realm how to tap into their internal genius. And that is the genie within, the magician, the wizard of infinite potential and infinite creativity. This is connected to the genetics, the genes, the DNA, Within genius is the gene, the I, the us, all is one. So the I am is the individual and the collective. We call unity consciousness or one consciousness, cosmic consciousness, whatever name you want to give to the one true source beyond all concepts and beyond all manifestations. Last night was another powerful night of energies coming through. With the beautiful moon shining brightly in the night, we were visited last night by many star nations, star beings. And under the moonlight, Gaia brought many creatures. In the dark, we were hearing many sounds. By we, I mean myself and my friends, my troop of very powerful warriors of the slug nation. <laughs> yes, the slugs and snails are some of my good friends. You all know what I'm talking about. We had many slug friends out last night of the, we call, Limax Maximus, meaning biggest slug. Another name could be Great Gray Slug and Leopard Slug. And hear me out for a moment. <laughs> These leopard slugs, they are amazing little creatures once you get to know them. They leave behind them little crystalline trails of magical light. And their bodies glisten with crystalline codes. And they have beautiful, dark, leopard marking spots all over their bodies. Some of the larger ones are four to eight inches. The one I was playing with and communicating with last night was <laughs> little Gertrude. And she was a precious little creature. What's cool is they're, they have little tentacles off of their head. And at the tip are tiny little eyes. They have very poor eyesight, but what's cool is with these tentacles, they move them in and out, and not only can they see with them, but they can smell the sense of smell through their eyes, which is very interesting. And as I was crawling around on the driveway, <laughs> we have some new neighbors next door. They they have no idea what they're in for. The 7373 <laughs> of the 1010 code, also for... An individual listening right now, here's a code for you. 373693. 373693. So as I was crawling around on Pachamama, with, there were slugs all over the place. There was a very strange sound. Sounds were popping off all around in the dark, but especially in my neighbor's tree, there was a very peculiar and interesting sound. I was trying to find where it was coming from, but it was too dark. I didn't have a strong enough flashlight, but it definitely sounded paranormal, higher dimensional, almost like a cackling sound. And then with this powerful moon, I couldn't sleep. 1122 coming in, 373737, that 
I was up till about four in the morning, but I would lay down and the moon kept calling to me, so I had to keep getting up. You know, I tried to go to sleep at about two, got up around three thirty three AM and around it was about two AM as this one star being was flashing like white and red light at me. This bird started uh, singing and flying circles around overhead. I couldn't see what it was, but it had a very unique sound to it. And then as I was crawling around, there were slugs all over the place. There must have, It must have been a very moist night. They liked the, the cool moist. It was a beautiful night, perfectly clear skies, the moon shining bright in all her glory. So as I was crawling... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do crawl around with many creatures. As I was crawling with this slug, Gertrude, there is this golden beetle that kept flying in circles over my head, and it would land on its back on the driveway. I had to keep helping it. It was stuck on its back. And I had to keep flipping them over. They would fly, spin around, and then land again. So eventually I picked them up and walked them over to the little butterfly bush and set him on a little leaf there and told him, you know, just chill out here for a minute. I think there was a, we have a motion sensor light that, that might have confused it in the flight, but then another golden one started flying around me. This amazing golden beetle, almost looked like a scarab beetle. So as, he, as these dimensions merge and these veils are lifting, we're, we're all having very interesting and peculiar stories as we connect with the fairy nations and the elvins and the wonderland is coming to life, the world of fantasy and amazement. And also in the corner of the bathroom last night was a humongous moth. It was like a big V-shaped and we just stood there looking at each other. And I said, let me, I didn't want him to be stuck in the house. So of course, I let him crawl on me. You know, moth, moths are very powerful spiritual creatures. Many shamans, especially in the Toltec, believe that the moths are gatekeepers of knowledge. They're transmitters of knowledge. We call gnosis, like gnostic. Gnosis to know, knowledge. And a gnostic, like G-N-O-S-T-I-C, is considered a person of knowledge, just like the shaman. And these were navigators of the unknown, bringing the known into the Unknown and the unknown into the known. Their emptiness in the form, form into emptiness. So I let him open the window and let him fly into the light. What, what's very powerful too with moths, they're, they're always trying to fly into the light. They're creatures that are attracted to the beauty of all lights. Just like all star seeds, we attract to the light. That when they fly around in the light projections... The shadows that they form create very powerful phantasmagoric imagery that gets the mind into the second attention or altered states, altered awareness. So next time, be aware of the shadow that these wing nations of all the beetles and the bugs and the butterflies, the dragonflies, the moths, Especially at night if you have a light on, look at the shadows that they cast and just open your gaze, let go into the body and see what manifests and what feelings they invoke and evoke within yourself. These are all tools of exploration. So have an amazing and blessed lunar eclipse, fourth and fifth and seven seven portal. And let us know, share with us your experiences on this channel and in our groups you can connect with our team at divine 44 rainbow tribe of the new earth on facebook have a beautiful and blessed day sacred beings of light spread your etheric wings and fly take flight upon the winds of change and the winds of freedom forevermore i love you all namaste Look at the storm. The storm is upon us. They just opened the gates for the first time in six months. Those are hail clouds. 
even though they're unbelievably beautiful, they actually are the most dramatic clouds because of the hail. And they have brand new flags. Brand new flags. The gates are coming down. Well, I am too. The gates are coming down of the American people. We're going to be allowed to enter. Mount Rushmore for the first time in six months. There's an energy and there's a buzz in the air. And those clouds are quite remarkable.